Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. You know, your body's immune system fights invaders, things like germs and viruses and parasites, all that bad stuff. But unfortunately, some cancer cells have this ability to evade or to hide from our immune system or to disable our immune system or make it ineffective in some way. But there are new forms of cancer treatment known as biological therapies that are harnessing and coaxing the body's powerful immune system to actually recognize cancer cells for what they are and wipe them out. Exciting stuff. It is amazing. One such treatment, a viral therapy using the measles virus, fires up the immune system and directs it toward the unwanted cancer cells. This type of viral therapy has shown promise in treating several types of cancer by preventing or slowing tumor growth or preventing the spread of cancer to other organs. Here to discuss using viral therapy to treat cancer is oncologist Dr. Eva Galanis. Dr. Galanis is the leader of the Gene and Virus Therapy Program at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to the program, Dr. Galanis. It's great to meet you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Dr. Galanis, so great to see you. So great to have you on the uh, on the program. And it's got to be pretty exciting that in your lab you are developing something that is better, more effective at treating cancer. Uh, I I should say that it's not just my lab, it's a huge effort at the Mayo Clinic, the Department of Molecular Medicine. A number of very talented investigators have come together with the goal of uh, being able to use uh, viruses to treat cancer, but also modify cells uh, to make them uh, more effective uh, treatments for cancer. Are viral therapy and immunotherapy the same thing? So this is a very good question. Um, so if, if we go back to the definition, viral therapy, as um, Tom alluded to, is essentially using uh, viruses that preferentially inf- infect and replicate um, in cancer cells and kill cancer cells. Um, immunotherapy, as you know, is the form of cancer treatment that stimulates the patient's own body, own immune system, to fight cancer. So at the beginning, when we started working on that approximately 20 years ago, we thought that these two modalities are completely separate. Then after many clinical trials and also preclinical work, we have been able to discover that cancer cells um, infected with viruses elicit these danger signals. And these danger signals stimulate the immune immune system system to more effectively recognize and attack cancer cells. So uh, viral therapy, in addition to have a direct destructive effect on cancer cells, it is also a very effective form of immunotherapy. So you are giving the patients a a virus so that the virus not only grows in the patient but also in the cancer cells, and then when that happens, then the body's immune system can recognize it as something it's bad and wants to get rid of, so the body kills the virus plus the cancer cell? (laughs) Excellent. So these viruses are actually are engineered or selected for their ability to very selectively replicate and kill cancer cells while actually do not affect at all normal cells. Hmm. Uh, wow. so, so is that why you call it targeted therapy? Correct. It's a form of targeted therapy. Exactly. And um, as a result of that, um, you are correct when the, the uh, virus replicates in cancer cells, the immune system would still attack the cells. And this is actually one of the ways. So presentation of cancer antigens in the context of this foreigner viral antigens that makes that a very effective form of immunotherapy. Is this still in the it's being tested phase or is it ready to be part of what is offered in conjunction with chemotherapy and radiation that you can also now add uh, viral therapy to that? Or are we still testing? So um, again, and this is an excellent question, this is another form of therapy. And similarly to other cancer treatments, sometimes can be administered as single modalities and a lot of the work of uh, clinical development is focusing on that because of course we want to be able to characterize this approach as a single modality in order to also know how to best combine. 
Uh, but then there is also a lot of work where we combine viruses with immunotherapy agents, for example, immune checkpoint inhibitors that have been approved for other indications. And a new trial uh, will um, soon activate and sarcoma, and I know Tom is treating a lot of sarcomas, uh, will actually test a virus in combination with radiation therapy to increase the cure rate of newly diagnosed sarcoma patients. Hmm. So how do you know what virus to use? How do you know which one is going to grow uh, in the cancer cell? Uh, so, of course, um, this in order to develop a clinical trial, um, it, there is a lot of preclinical work that has to happen before. And as part of this preclinical work, we characterize the specific characteristics of the cancer cells. Do they express the receptor for the respective viruses? And also, what is the response to the viruses in vitro and in vivo, and we use all this information in order to make the selection. Going back to the measles virus, a great thing about using this platform is that, in fact, pretty much every tumor type we have tested, and we um, have looked into mechanisms, and we think that, in part, this is because two of the virus receptors are overexpressed in cancer cells, the cancer cells use the viral re one of the viral receptors as one of the ways to evade the immune system. So now we use that as the Trojan horse to allow the virus to enter and make it more specific for cancer cells. Wow, incredible. By the way, uh, for our uh, audience, our listeners, in vitro means in the lab or in the test tube or in the Petri dish. In vivo means in, in the body. Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, fabulous. It's got to be intensely uh, interesting. Now, when w the, the story that came out a couple of years ago about the patient who had multiple myeloma that was treated with, uh, was that chickenpox virus or was that measles virus also? Remember the, the lady yeah. that had such a big tumor yes. on her forehead that she named it Ernie yes. or, yes. <laughs> or Tom? <laughs> Uh, and then they gave her this uh, virus, yes. and uh, the tumor went away. What, what was that? The same virus? Uh, so this is a, this patient was treated with measles virus, and at this point she continues being disease free. She so, is. So this is uh, this is amazing, oh, and of course awesome. she's a wonderful advocate of this. Yeah, effort. we interviewed her. She was so great. But but in addition to this, we have other patients with other tumor types who have been uh, benefiting from these approaches. And um, as a next step in talking about clinical trial development, we are now conducting a randomized trial in ovarian cancer patients, um, essentially randomizing patients uh, between measles virus and the physician's chemotherapy of choice. Mm. And of course, that's the next step towards thinking down the road about the possibility of regulatory approval of these agents. We have about 30 seconds left. Can you uh, quickly tell us about the uh, using stem cells and uh, the breakthrough that you've accomplished? So uh, this is actually another approach where uh, we um, infect the patient's own uh, stem cells deriving from their fat tissue with the virus and administer them to the patient. This is, again, patients with ovarian cancer. The reason being that this way, the virus is protected by the immune system because it's carried by the cells. Also, these cells have this very interesting property of homing, going, where all tumor activity happens. And this way, we have a very targeted way to deliver our viruses. Incredible. I'm glad that was the last question because it's already starting to get a little complicated <laughs> for me. <laughs> Mayo Clinic oncologist, cancer specialist, Dr. Eva Ganales. Eva Ganales. Galanis. Dr. Eva Galana, she is also leader of the gene and virus therapy program at the Mayo Clinic. Eva Galanis, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so very much.